everyone and welcome back to another vlog you're gonna have to excuse this it's my day off so i'm in like proper chill out mess mode <laughs> also please excuse if you hear any rain and wind in the background it's because you're on my window ledge and the rain might hit the window so it'll give a nice soothing effect hopefully to the video we'll see so it is the first of may if you can see my little thing from there i do not know it's a new month new month guys new adventures new goals set yourself some targets for the month what are you going to achieve this month other than covid forgetting covid right now what are you going to do this month let me know comment below whatever do what you do i've actually got a very good feeling about this month i don't know why but i feel really jolly and positive about this month <laughs> i'm really sorry that must really annoy people at how positive i am i'm so sorry but yeah, I've got a really good feeling about May. I think things are going to look up, hopefully not um, relax any measures or anything because we do not need that right now. But I think things are going to look up. I think this is going to be the start of a really good month and hopefully the rest of the year can go well. Fingers crossed. This week I have had my usual blood test, wound management injections to oh i had actually a, a new injection that i hadn't given before but i have seen this been done before i did the e-learning for it i did all of my online research for it i even watched a, like a demonstration video for it just to know what i'm doing with the um injection but obviously i'm a nurse i'm trained to do injections injections is what we did at university i did it on placements so i can do injections it's just this particular medication i hadn't given before so i just wanted to learn a little bit more about it before i give it because as a nurse we have to understand what we're giving and why we're giving it and the contraindications and side effects and all of that so i did all of my research before giving this injection and it was a really nasty injection to give but this particular injection was a really it, the liquid um, was a, a really thick, gluky, it was like syrup injections. Oh, it was horrible. And you sort of have to give it over two minutes. You have to really time it. <laughs> um, so that was really, really interesting. It was very good for my learning and my knowledge. I'm sorry if you can hear Dylan in the background. I don't know if, oh, he's on the floor. I was just say, you can't see him. I don't know where he is. He's on the floor, puffing and puffing. Um, yeah, so it was a very nasty injection to give. However, I enjoyed giving it because it was something new. And I think it quite, kind of went quite well for the first time I'd given that injection. And I had the time in between my patients to actually research into it. So I was quite, I'm quite proud of myself for that. <laughs> so just some advice to any of you out there. If you're given a medication, make sure you know all of these things. Make sure you know the dose, the side effects, contraindications, cautions, everything to do with that medication because you need to know it before you give it. You make you need to make sure that it's safe to give. You can't just assume that because it's been prescribed it's okay. You have to be that second checker. It's not just down to the doctor, it's down to you. Um, and this is why we have to learn medications at university and know the actions of the medications and things like that. So just make sure that you're being safe and sensible. Patient safety has to come first with all of these things and you are just as, as accountable for giving that medication because you should be knowing these things before giving it. So yes, I know you're all amazing anyway and do this anyway, but just yeah, to advise anyone that doesn't know this, like if you haven't started your nurse training or anything like that, um, just a little tip, just look up your medications and know your medications. My next little moment of the week, which this is the first time, um, no, it's not the first time, but this was the, the the first thing that's really stood out for me since I've started my new job. So as you know, I started the 3rd of February in my GP role and everything's been a little bit uncertain and stuff with COVID-19. My course has been put back, so I'm having to wait to do that now. It's been postponed till September. Anyway, I went off a on a tangent. That's not what I want to tell you. Um, so basically, I have felt very useless. I think I've said this in a previous vlog, how I feel like I don't feel like I'm doing enough or even though I am I'm doing enough but um there's been patients that have asked me things and I've been like oh god I don't know and then it's really knocked my confidence a little bit but this week I've had a patient I can't go into too much details because of confidentiality again but I had a certain patient that come in they were just coming in for a blood test but when I looked into the notes and the consultations before this patient come in there was a little bit more to the story and she was having some um symptoms these symptoms are something that I know about. I know, I know something. <laughs> 
Um, and that's only because of my sexual health and family planning, planning experience. So I was really well prepared for her when she came in because I was thinking, oh, it could be this, could be that, could be this. I wonder if anyone spoke to her about this. So I sat her down and I did the bloods and just to take her mind off the bloods because she was quite very, very anxious. She was anxious about blood testing, COVID, everything that was going on with her as well in her own life. She was very anxious, so I really wanted to put her at rest. I wanted to take her mind off it and I wanted to communicate with her properly about what was going on and the different options she might have, if that makes sense. It's really hard to talk about without going into too much details. Anyway, so I, I sort of went through the sexual history stuff because I feel like people sort of shy away from it. I'm not saying anyone's done this, but I, I feel like a lot of people get a little bit ooh, and awkward and embarrassed when I ask, asking questions about sex and sexual history. But do you know what? Sexual health is a part of our life and it's something that we need to be open to talking to with our patients. So I just went through some of her symptoms. I wanted to know a bit of a history as well of what was going on in her personal life. So I asked those sort of questions. However, she was of an age that I, I thought this could possibly be menopause. There's things that she's saying and I'm thinking, actually, this sounds a lot about menopause. Um, and she told me that no one's actually sit down and spoke to her properly about menopause, about different treatment options, about symptoms of menopause and managing the symptoms. So I was like, this is perfect. This is my area. My speciality is sexual health. <laughs> so I sat down and I spent a good 30, 40 minutes with this patient, sitting her down. I went through everything. I went through all of the different symptoms. I went through all the different treatment plans that she may not have been told about. And she was amazed. She was like, oh my God, you've told me so much information, more than anyone has ever given me. She said, oh, thank you so much because you've put my mind completely at ease of everything. And she said, I'm just so, so grateful and she well walked out with a smile and I just thought I've been useful <laughs> so I was so chuffed I was so chuffed I had a little tear in my eye it's giving me a little tear in my eye thinking about it and so when one of the nurses was passing the door just as the patient left and um, she's like oh you're having a good day I was like I'm having a bloody marvellous day I said I've been useful and it just felt so nice and it gave me that little bit of confidence back but just having that this week is just, oh, it's made me feel so much better. And it's just, I'm just like, do you know what? This is where my speciality lies. It is sexual health and contraception. And it was just amazing to be able to sit down and know things, like actually know a lot of information about something and be able to help somebody and just completely erase all of their anxiety and fears. And they left with a smile, which is more than what they come in with. So yeah, yeah it made my day. And it was just one of them moments that I thought, you know, this is why I came into nursing, to change somebody's attitude, to change lives, to change behaviours, to put smiles on people's faces, to reassure people, COVID compassion that I keep going on about. This is what it's all about. And it's just, honestly, it's made my whole entire week and it's got me going again. It's got me going. I mean, I was already going, but, you know, it's that little bit more... Mm. <laughs> Anyway, the next exciting thing I want to tell you this week is, I need to show you this without giving away um, my address and things. <laughs> so, as some of you know, I did a little New Year's resolution. It was on Twitter, Instagram. I don't know if I did, did I do a blog about it? Possibly, I don't even know. And um, anyway, my one and only New Year's resolution this year was to give blood. I've never given blood. And this is because I have tattoos, I got belly button piercings, I had a lip piercing, I've traveled. These sort of things have always stopped me from giving blood. So this year I, I put everything aside and said, right, this year is the year I'm going to give blood because I'm so sick of not doing it. And I feel ashamed because we need to give blood to help other people and save lives. So I signed up to be a blood donor. And finally, <laughs> I've got an appointment, which is the 10th of May. And this is my letter. So yeah, so I've got my appointment the 10th of May. It's the 1st of May today. So I have got nine days. Oh, so next Sunday, not this Sunday, next Sunday. So next Sunday, I'll be doing my blood donation. I'm going to try and get a video of it because it'd be really nice to do a little video of blood donation and things like that how it went, how it felt. I'm going to be anxious, I'm not going to lie, um, because I've seen the size of the needle that they use for blood donations and I've seen how painful it is after. So, can you hear that rain? Oh my God. 
anyway so yeah i'm gonna be anxious i'm gonna be scared but i'm gonna be saving a life potentially also i don't know what blood type group i'm i am so it'd be nice to actually know that as well because if i've got a fancy blood group i don't think i have i'm sure my mom would have told me something like that um i think i'm probably just a standard blood group i've got that in my head um but if i am a fancy blood group i can do it sort of more often so yeah i'm excited about this i'm excited about my blood donation oh my god can you s hang on I oh know. Wowzers. Anyway, my last piece of positivity is I've been seeing everyone getting really creative online. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to do something a bit different. So I've started creating things. I can't remember if I've shown you this before. So I'm really sorry if you've seen this. I'm just really excited about it. But I've started making these. I don't know how you can see that. So I've used resin to sort of mold some rose quartz here some clear quartz crystals here a little flower and she's so i know i'm so chuffed i mean it's not perfect but i've mastered a little bit of resin art just in a different way this is where's my other one this is my other one that i've made i've made one for one of my best friends she's got amethyst wings and a little flower and she's so cute. I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> and then, I know, I've got a little dragon. Look at him. I've made him a little pyrite, 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 I can't say it, pyrite um, mohawk. Apparently pyrite, they used to make, um, back in the day when they used to make their own weapons, they used to use pyrite in their swords to give them strength and all that jazz. So yeah. Then I made a little, um, used my resin art, proper resin art this time. And I made a little pyrite moon. Look at that. <laughs> I wanted to keep this bit rough. The back's smooth, but I wanted this to be rough because I wanted it to be like what I imagined the moon to be like, like this rough surface. Does that make sense? Yeah, so I've been busy. I've been getting creative, guys. I know. If you've got into any sort of creativity and you've been doing amazing things, please let me know and show me. Inbox me or comment below. I don't know if you can attach pictures. Show me. I, I really want to see it. I get so excited by seeing other people's creations. And it's really nice to share other people's stuff as well and um, sort of keep each other motivated and stuff like that. But I was massively inspired by so many people on Instagram, on Twitter and all the amazing things that I wanted to start something. So I've started these. So I'm going to shut up now. I'm sorry, guys. I don't want this video to be hours and hours and hours long because it must drain your soul. Um, I hope you're all OK. I hope you're doing amazing. Keep going, everyone, because it is a tough time. But you know what? We are going to get through this. This isn't going to last forever. And we are going to do amazing at the end of it. We're going to be stronger than ever. We're going to be better than ever. And yeah, it's going to be a very different way of living, I think, after this. But you know what? You're all doing fantastic. Keep going, get motivated and keep shining on. Mm -hmm.